Alrighty, so let's mark the keyword. A keyword helps us to arrive at the correct answer quickly. Let's uh, first look at option A. This is a hunting live stream session. Hunting sessions are used for real time analysis, but do not create incidents automatically. Uh, so let's reject this. Don't just pass your ID certification, instead pass with flying colors with my keyword tricks included in the PDF exclusively for diamond members and above. Become a member now by clicking the join button to unlock this perk including the hands-on files. After you are done, please connect and inbox me on LinkedIn at the rate of Cloud Guru Amit or Instagram at the rate of Amit Physique. I'll be glad to help you out with the PDF access. Also, please check out my courses on Udemy by searching Cloud Guru Amit or you can visit the URL udemy.com slash user slash Cloud Guru Amit where I have tons of courses related to management, cybersecurity, Google Cloud which will help you upskill and boost your career to the next level. Let's move to option B. B says a query bookmark. Bookmark helps in saving queries for later but do not trigger incident creation what we are looking in the question be wrong let's move to c c says scheduled query rule scheduled query rules continuously monitor logs and create incidents when a matching pattern is detected this looks good we'll uh, keep this we'll move to d d says a fusion rule fusion rule combines multiple alerts to generate incidents but uh, they do not work based on a single hunting query wrong choice let's lock option c schedule query rule as the right choice we have a brainstorming question we need to select two correct answers let's look at first option a AC is microsoft sentinel workbooks microsoft sentinel workbooks are used for data visualization and monitoring but uh, again they do not automate incident response what we need so a is out let's move to b b says azure automation run books automation run books provide scripted automation for various azure tasks but uh, they lack direct integration for incident response automation in microsoft sentinel again incorrect let's move to c c says microsoft sentinel automation rules microsoft sentinel automation rule helps in automating or helps in automatically uh, trigger responses based on predefined conditions reducing manual intervention looks good because that's what we need let's keep this we'll move to d and this is microsoft sentinel playbooks microsoft sentinel playbooks enable the execution of automated workflows to remediate security threats eff uh, efficiently uh, that being said, we got our two correct answers. Let's log this. Let's bring the heat to the snow. So here we got a question related to live response session. We'll look at first option A. E says run the library command. The library command is used to run a script that is already in the library. But before execution, the script needs to be uploaded first. Incorrect. We'll move to B. B says upload script3.ps3 to the library so this is a uh, script 3 ps3 is nothing but a powershell script if you read the question in a live response session scripts need to be uploaded to the library before they can be executed without this step the script is not accessible for execution within the session let's keep this we'll move to c c says run the put file command the put file command is meant for file transfers but it does not ensure that the script is accessible for execution in the live response session wrong choice we'll move to d this is modify the partial execution policy of the device partial execution policies control script execution permissions but uh, live response sessions override the settings and require scripts to be uh, in the library that being said this is again wrong if we confirm in the official documentation and uh, put a file in the library it's mentioned live response allows partial and bash scripts to run 
however you must first put the files into the library before you can uh, run them you can have a collection of PowerShell and uh, bash scripts that can run on devices that you initiate live response sessions with that being said option busy right choice we have an interesting question this time which will test our concepts on automated investigation and response known as EIR and we got uh, malware infected emails let's um, look at uh, the options uh, which option requires manual remediation right not the automated let's look at option a it says soft deleting the email message security tools can automatically remove malicious emails from users uh, mailbox without requiring manual intervention so this is wrong we'll move to b b says hard deleting the email message and uh, so automated security policies in microsoft defender for office 365 can handle permanent email deletion without administrator involvement so this is again wrong let's move to option c cc is isolating the device microsoft defender for endpoint doesn't do isolation as automated response looks good because we are looking for manual remediation right so we'll keep this we'll move to d d says containing the device Microsoft Defender for uh, Endpoint can automatically restrict the device's activity making containment an automated process rather than manual step. So D is wrong. Let's lock option C isolating the device as the right choice. Alrighty, here we go with a new question which will test our concept on deep analysis. Let's look at first option A. Only file 6.ps1 so which is nothing but looks like a partial uh, script so uh, so partial scripts are not supported for deep analysis in a defender uh, um, xdr hence incorrect let's move to b b says only file 7.exe only submitting an executable file that is exe does not utilize the full capability of Defender XDR, which also supports um, DLL uh, analysis. So let's for now remove this. We'll move to C. Uh, C is self-explanatory because um, only uh, D DLL, that is dynamic link library file, overlooks potential threats in executable files. What we have rejected in previous options, like um, option B, which could also be paired with. So this is again uh, wrong let's move to option d that is exe and dll together so executable and uh, dll dot dll files can be submitted for a deep analysis because defender xdr evaluates them for potential security threats that being said option d is the uh, correct choice if you look at the official documentation under deep analysis it's mentioned deep analysis currently supports extensive analysis of portable executable pe files including .exe and .dll files looks good let's lock option d as the right choice all righty here we go where we need to identify all entities affected by security incident let's look at option a he says investigations investigations tab provides tools for analyzing attack pattern uh, but uh, does not focus on listing affected entities what we need a is wrong let's move to option b b says assets assets tab displays managed devices and accounts but does not highlight entities impacted by a specific security incident so again wrong let's move to c c says evidence and response evidence and response tab complies or uh, i mean evidence and response tab compiles all affected files devices and the users related to an incident assisting with security investigations we'll keep this we'll move to d d says alerts alert tab contains notifications about detected threats but does not organize all affected entities together therefore let's reject it and lock option c evidence and response is the right choice all righty here we go where uh, we need to tackle indicator of compromise known as ioc within the incidents page 
So which entity should be classified? Let's look at first option here. This is malware name. Malware names are useful for classification. However, they are not labeled as indicator of compromise from the incident page. So incorrect. Let's move to B. B says host. Host can be affected but uh, are not categorized as again indicator of compromise within Sentinel. So this is wrong. Let's move to C. C says user account. User accounts may be compromised but are not labeled again as indicator of compromise in Sentinel. So wrong. Let's move to D. This is IP address. IP addresses involved uh, in uh, malicious activity can be classified as indicator of compromise for threat detection in Sentinel. That being said, option D is the right choice. Okay. So now let's test our concepts on collecting a list of inst install programs. Let's look at option A. It says execute an advanced hunting query on device process events dataset. Device process events dataset contains process related events but does not provide a complete list of installed programs. Incorrect. Uh, we'll move to option B. B says execute an advanced hunting query on device TVM software inventory dataset. Device TVM software inventory dataset contains software inventory data, making it the appropriate choice for retrieving installed program details. Let's keep this. We'll move to C. C says launch an automated security investigation and check the results in the action center. Automated investigation helps analyze alerts but do not offer a list of installed programs. Wrong choice. Let's move to D. D says start a live response session and execute the processes command. The processes command reveals active processes, not a full inventory of installed programs. Let's delete it. If you look at the official documentation, the device TVM software inventory table in the advanced hunting schema contains the Microsoft Defender vulnerability management inventory of uh, software currently installed on devices in your network including end of support information. You can, for instance, hunt for events involving devices that are installed within a currently vulnerable software version use as reference to construct queries that return information from the table that being said option b is the right choice let's bring the heat to the snow here we got a, a question where um, the three key identifiers associated with the incident has been identified let's uh, look at um, which entities can be added during this incident page in sentinel let's first look at option a this is only the ip address IP address uh, can be added to the threat intelligence list using the incident page allowing Sentinel to monitor future security threats tied to the IP. Let's keep this. We'll move to B. B says the only the server host 7. Host 7 uh, a server identified as host 7 it's mentioned. So Sentinel doesn't support adding host names to intelligent uh, to threat intelligence list from the incident page the wrong choice let's move to c c is only the user account user 7 user accounts can not be added to the threat intelligence list through the incident page in sentinel let's delete it we'll move to d and this is the ip address and the server host 7 we have already rejected uh, the server host 7 in option b while IP address uh, can be included, host names are not permitted for addition via the incident page. That makes option um, D as incorrect because host 7 is wrong. Just like option B, D is uh, out. Well, lock option A, only the IP address as the right answer. Alrighty, here we go with a question where... Uh, Defender XTR has detected malicious behavior and applies automatic attack disruption measures that isolate a user. Let's um, look at option A. He says only remote desktop protocol known as RDP. Limiting the uh, block um, um, RDP alone won't or wouldn't uh, prevent 
other forms of communication that could allow further unauthorized access so wrong choice let's move to b b says only remote procedure call known as rpc blocking only remote procedure call would leave uh, avenues like rdp and smb open enabling user 6 to interact with device 12 let's eliminate it we'll move to c c says only server uh, message block known as uh, smb restricting only smb would not sufficiently prevent remote interactions via rdp or uh, rpc what we have rejected previously which are also used for remote access and command execution so wrong choice let's move to option d and d is nothing but a combination of option a b and c so microsoft defender xtr automatic attack and disruption mechanism enforces containment by uh, blocking rdp rpc and smb preventing lateral movement across devices that being said option d is the right choice if we confirm in the official documentation it's mentioned when an identity is contained any supported microsoft defender for endpoint onboarded device will block incoming traffic in specific protocols related to attacks network logons rpc smb rdp terminate ongoing remote sessions and log off existing rdp connections terminating the session itself including its needed process while enabling legitimate traffic that's what we need you can have a read uh, at this entire um, official documentation for more information in the interest of time we'll lock option d as the right choice if you want the pdf version including the key keyword tricks please enroll in diamond membership or above by clicking the join button now then please connect and inbox me on linkedin at the rate of cloud guru amit or instagram at the rate of amit physique for pdf file and hands-on file access also please check out my exclusive courses on udemy by searching cloud guru amit or navigating to url udemy.com slash user slash cloud guru amit which will help you to upscale your knowledge related to project management google cloud cybersecurity, and many more thank you so much for watching this video